Oké, okay. um, nou, ik zie dat uh, commercie en code nog steeds niet echt goed samen gaan. Als ik kijk van 150 uh, mensen op deze dag, dan uh, zie ik hier 10% op zijn hoogst zitten. Um, en toch denk ik dat iedereen uh, ook nog graag zijn uh, hypotheek wil betalen. Uh, brood op de plank wil, kinderen in de kleren wil houden en uh, ook nog een oppas uh, moet betalen. Um, eerst maar even een kleine introductie over mezelf voordat ik uh, probeer aan te geven dat er nog wat nodig is voordat je met uh, open source geld uh, kan verdienen. Um, nou, mijn ambitie is world domination, dat was het vroeger in de brick and mortar wereld. En dat is geleidelijk aan uh, uh, in de loop van mijn uh, nogal uh, gevlekte uh, Loopbaan een uh, World Domination 2.0 geworden. Het is meer digitaal uh, gericht. En toen kwam eigenlijk uh, mijn eerste stap daarin. En dat was een eigen bedrijf op het gebied van open source geo-ICT. Uh, van daaruit hebben we een coöperatie met een aantal uh, bedrijven en ZZP'ers opgericht om met name grote open source gerelateerde geografische informatiesystemen te, uh, ja, hoe zullen we het zeggen, uh, te implementeren. Ik zit net even te bedenken, het was mij gevraagd om het in het Engels te doen. Zijn er buitenlanders in de zaal? Ja, yeah? sorry. Then I'll switch over to uh, uh, English. Um, well, you could have understood that I'm in for a world domination. Um, I tried to do that stepwise, first by my own company, B3 Partners, and secondly, as a second step, the Open Geo Group, as a cooperation of uh, 12, 13 uh, smaller companies who combined forces in order to get a uh, better uh, shot at larger projects uh, in the market. Um, well, world domination uh, step number three was uh, initiating the open source software uh, supplier organization, uh, which accounts now for about 55, 56 members, of which the largest uh, international integrators are also part, but also the SME type of businesses and some smaller businesses. Um, I am presently chairman and after three years I think uh, I have to hand over the uh, uh, chairmanship uh, to somebody else and I hope to do that in April. Um, world domination is also about publishing what you believe in. I do that in columns in the national uh, ICT magazine Computable and in a smaller uh, geographical uh, information system related magazine called GIS, GIS magazine. Um, you cannot always say everything in a column, so I tried to write a book, uh, which uh, was titled Open Source Inside. I believe strongly in branding open source in terms of uh, it's inside, like you have uh, saccharine in uh, Coca-Cola, if I'm not mistaken. And you have Intel inside, of course. Um, however, uh, after 10, 12 years, I was still not dominating the world. Neither is open source, to be quite honest. So I had to change my own tactics and uh, I went into stealth mode for a while. And have, together with some international uh, consultants, set up uh, the Age of Peers agency and we have launched ourselves during the Open World Forum in Paris uh, last September. Uh, as a global agency we uh, focus heavily on strategy, marketing, business development of open source uh, software uh, suppliers. Um, and also we uh, try to do or to enable community development communities being the sort of foundation of any uh, open source project uh, and we try to implement everything uh, together with the customers in terms of media relations, PR and that sort of, uh, of activities. Our main focus of uh, business is open technology. As you can read I have stated data, open data there as well. well it was uh, handy in order to uh, not have too big a slide uh, 
but effectively it's not a technology, but it's an enabler for technology. At least in Holland it is. Um, as an open source service provider, open standards service provider, we try to align the interests of the supply chain, vendors, integrators, uh, communities, and uh, all sorts of partners, and the customers of course, uh, in order to have a market that is tr both transparent and profitable. Um, as I said, everybody needs to pay their own mortgage, so uh, some money needs to be made somewhere along the line. Uh, that means that we develop markets uh, for customers, uh, we foster the product uh, adoption in the marketplace by raising visibility and uh, whenever possible we try to generate leads. Um, the track record of the partners uh, among other uh, activities have incorporated open office, open office community management which was done by Louis Potts, uh, perhaps well known, perhaps not well known, but then uh, we have an Englishman, two the Germans, uh, a Frenchman is upcoming. We have an uh, Indian guy, an uh, American lady, which is one of the few uh, female uh, professionals that I know of uh, in the open source uh, arena. And uh, for myself, I've done several projects up till now for governmental agencies in ter terms of open sourcing uh, their uh, specific parts of software that they had developed internally. Um, then let's go to what I would call <laughs> way back when. Uh, open source was identified as being a, ge a geek uh, activity. Um, and it has still not totally shaken off that image. However, uh, in this century, I don't know if anybody has uh, seen the uh, movie or the uh, uh, play called Hair, in which, uh, well, the age of Aquarius was uh, uh, being sung as the ultimate time for uh, freedom for all, uh, peace, love and happiness. Well, that is the sort of image that has been associated with open source and the open domain in general as well. However, the suits came in. Um, I have done a talk in uh, England uh, last year and there was some speaker before me who said anybody who wears a suit cannot be involved in open source. Whatever activity is related to open source. So I was sitting at the front and there was uh, some, let's say, dissent uh, on the front row and my neighbor said, shall I take him or are you going to take him on? And I said, well, I'm after the uh, break, the coffee break, so it gives me more time to prepare. Um, it has been filmed and it's online, but I came up and I said, okay, and I had my jacket underneath uh, the table. I came up in, in a shirt and I said, okay, uh, to be honest, I am a suit and I put on my jacket, but to top things off, I'm a tie as well. So I did my tie on while starting my talk. Uh, five years ago, I came on to a presentation, suit and tie and I was nearly booed off the podium. Uh, I managed to sort of uh, stand tall just by saying, okay, and I took somebody on the front row, and this is not personal, but who had literally clothes on, which had not been washed, were completely uh, with holes and uh, whatever stains you can imagine. And I pointed him out and I said, sorry, but at least I am making money out of it, and by the looks of it, you are not. That was, well, very close to a lynch mob that uh, I encountered then. However, I come across this sort of attitude quite often, 
and I'm not sure uh, if this is going to win the day for us. Uh, anyway, let's go back to what our industry or ecosystem as it's called in a more friendly term uh, consists of. Well, the bases are of course the communities. However, we always say communities are very much sort of the happy, uh, uh, peace-loving uh, geeks, if you want to call them that. Uh, well, maybe in the early days that friendliness was nice and happy and uh, wholesome. Nowadays, I see communities compete with one another. Funding has become more scarce. The amount of developers available uh, in this world have become scarce. And at the Open World Forum, I noticed that whenever I mentioned the fact that, oh gosh, communities are competitors for the attention in the marketplace, for uh, development capacity and for funding, people were looking at me and said, well, that's not true. We are all one big happy family. Okay, I'm just a silly MBA uh, and I thought, okay, maybe it's not the nicest thing perhaps to say during this conference, but it mulled in my head for quite, for quite a while and I thought, okay, leave it. Perhaps in time people will recognize what I've said. Well, then what I would call the pillars of creation, uh, communities make stuff, code, uh, but they don't do anything with the marketplace directly. So now in time entities like the MySQL, Sugar, CRM and whatever, oh, Red Hat, don't forget Red Hat, uh, organizations have evolved out of communities and actually are uh, large sponsors nowadays of all these developers within these communities. Um, and they bring actually a sort of finished product to the marketplace. It's not shrink-wrapped, no. You can download it. And in the meantime also some sort of shrink-wrapped like versions have emerged. Uh, uh, for instance, the enterprise version of MySQL, of Sugar CRM and the likes. On the other hand of the spectrum you have the users and they are becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. On the left hand you have entities that compete in the marketplace for these customers. Gosh, Red Hat as a uh, competitive entity in this open source world. I think that is the true nature of these entities at the end of the day. Uh, it's a marketplace at the end of the day as well. The customers have to compete with one another, whether it's a government nowadays or a government agency, or, or a profit or non-profit. But these are all subjected to competitive forces. And somewhere in between, the open source software ecosystem is evolving with, uh, let's go from the bottom. You have those professionals, those uh, one-man bands, who have ties into the community, have a function there as well, and they sell their services to, ever, to whomever needs them. Um, then you have the, what I would call body shops. Well, they are meat markets. Uh, they s sell anyone who has two hands, a head and two legs. Uh, and they sell their services to their surrounding environment as well. You have the OS open source uh, distributors. In uh, Holland you have specifically aimed at open source. For instance, Dupaco, uh, Amazic Source, and then somewhere in the south around this area, there's another one, a third one. I forgot the name. Um, and what they do is sell uh, service level agreements. Actually, if they add value or not, I don't know. But they are necessary because you cannot buy an 
a service level agreement as a, cus as a user, a customer, directly with uh, the Red Hat organization somewhere in the States. Uh, it's also a uh, sensible business practice to have uh, resell entities throughout the world. And then the implementation side of uh, the ecosystem, this part. Um, that's what most people either work for or uh, see uh, in public of uh, the open source community. Uh, they consist of the large entities in Holland, Logicas, Capgeminis of this world, who have a mixed offering, closed and open. You have uh, the pure, 100% pure players uh, in terms of integrating open source software like Smile, um, which is, uh, I think, a good thing to have those as well. Uh, you have the specialized entities. My former company was one, purely directed the, uh, at uh, open source geographical information systems. You have the CRM uh, implementation uh, clubs. But you have also the, what I would call the tailor-made uh, entities who make whatever you want as, uh, as a customer. They don't uh, use preferably one or the other uh, platform to develop up upon. Um, sometimes they do also Microsoft uh, implementations and uh, uh, made-to-measure uh, projects. So this is in general what you see nowadays evolving and maturing. And still we have a stairway to heaven promised to us, a better world. How to get there? I have surmised that in what I would call the commons uh, that evolves from a fledgling uh, entity uh, terrain into a more mature marketplace. And as you can see uh, on the vertical axis, uh, whenever an industry or a business ecosystem evolves, the performance of the products, services that uh, are supplied in that marketplace is growing. Uh, that coincides with the technical maturity of the projects. Uh, it coincides with the fact that more and more people are aware of it and use it. Well, that attracts new players, new competition. Um, and everybody is fighting for market share. And vis-a-vis -vis the closed source uh, world, the market share of open source software is hopefully also increasing. Well, return on investment increases, the whole thing is there uh, related. And as time pass uh, goes by, more investments, more effort is being put into the projects. And but uh, it's not only implementation, but training, consultancy, and whatever you have is attached to that specific product. Let's go back to the early beginnings of the open source industry. It's a time of the tinker. Uh, and he graces the commons like a cow. It sounds, but actually uh, what he does is it's a one-man band enterprise who works for this uh, entity, that entity, and he or she, not that many she's there, but is very technology driven. Uh, the project that he is working on is also very immature. They're still trying out piloting. Uh, and whenever they sell their services, it's sell, selling their services to ICT professionals. So they don't need to have a business case. They just say, I'm very good at this. You need that. Okay, hire me. Uh, and when the, their work is done, they go, up, uh, go off into the marketplace again and find somebody else. Um, at, the at that time, it's not s everything is so... In a, so much in a pilot phase that it's not cl quite clear is there a benefit from 
uh, that project to be derived. Um, the business model is revolving around just selling hours for hopefully as many euros or dollars as possible. Uh, and these uh, one-man bands are mostly part of a community uh, in a very early phase community. A show and the show have to show the technical feasibility of the project, of what they are doing. As time goes by and everything goes uh, according plan, uh, the amount of functionality uh, of the projects, the uh, amount of code increases. And little startup companies uh, emerge that make tailor made uh, applications for customers, at least also for themselves, because they are often part of the customer. And whenever they have to sell something, they sell it to either the ICT specialist at the, uh, at the customer's uh, organization and or a specific specialist that needs a little application just to uh, do his work better, to enable him to uh, process information, for instance, better. It's not a mind-blowing uh, organization-wide implementation, certainly not, it's just related to very small pockets within the company. So they fly under the radar of the ICT uh, managers most often than not. These little outfits, up to five, ten man bands, they compete with one another. And for the first time there are tangible benefits associate, associated to the projects. Because there's money to be earned and a market developing and customers are wanting to pay, pay a premium price because there's not that much on offer. And okay, you have additional services in the business model. Quite often it's pre-sales consulting, but more and more uh, of that consulting service is being paid for in advance. And I believe that we are now on the brink of a new phase in our uh, growth as a worldwide community. And that is, we go from a technical perspective towards a more commercial perspective. We have a market to gain, and we are not going to gain it by just saying, we are good. We need to have uh, more insight in what customers, processes entail. The moment that you have an open ERP system to be imp implemented, you need somebody, somebody who can tell you how the business of that organization is put together. And just being what I would call the geek is not enough. Um, you see that 80% of the largest projects have about 80% of functionality ready. They, they can nearly shrink, uh, sh shrink wrap it because it's there. Uh, it is a more mature offering that you have. And you sell it with a focus on the value to the customer. Actually, what you do is you productize your project, your, your offering. And that means that suddenly products, companies, communities, have to compete on brand name, on cost, on whatever sort of driver behind the market with each other. So you see, for instance here in Holland, Typo 3, typo three uh, competing with Drupal. You see that happening also on a more global scale, or at least in the Western world, as I can see. Um, CRM the same uh, case. You have quite a lot of CRM projects now competing for a customer with companies that say, I'm going to use the project that reaps the best benefits for me. And if the community is not working properly, if the code is not working properly, 
if I'm not being supported with enough material, for instance, from that uh, project, then I switch over to another project that can give me all those things I need in order to grow my business, my limited. Uh, you see that the market is more demand driven, whereas before you could say, this what is what I have on offer, now the, the customer says, I want this, because uh, I can compare it with a shrink wrapped alternative. The costs of the projects uh, to be implemented are more a driver in decision making processes. So general management is increasingly involved. Um, this all means that companies, projects, communities really have to think strategically to, to see what is the competition doing, what is the user at the end of the supply chain doing. Are there new entrants coming into the market? Are there substitute products? And they have to look around them in their environment instead of just focusing on code. And now imagine, most companies in this previous phase have been set up by technically driven entrepreneurs. And now they find themselves in a world where competition, hyper-competition it's often called, means that you really, really have to have more on board than just good code. The amount of business models surrounding this maturity phase, where products are all uh, in the perception of the, the customer, is that you need to optimize that last 20% can give you an edge vis-à-vis -vis the competitor. Uh, in case you want to make money on one hand and you want to uh, be sort of supportive to the co uh, communities, you could go for a dual license. That's often looked upon as, gosh, are they really, really open? And I say, well, why not, depending on the license, uh, the legal uh, implications of the license applied, it would, I would say it's up for them to decide. I don't see there any wrong or right for that matter. And then you see additional services like consulting coming into the marketplace because the hour for a consultant is for instance 150 th uh, euro per hour Whereas if you see what you can reap uh, from a, the hour of a developer, that's 100 euro on average. And last year in Holland I heard 60 euro per hour being offered just for uh, development, implementation. Whereas consulting is higher level and it looks like, okay, I really get something from it and they all wear a suit, so okay, 150 is okay. Um, what you see is that companies, for instance, the dual license uh, oriented companies, uh, sponsor communities. It's a sort of trade-off. Uh, I make money from the, the code and I give something back. And I think it's a fair deal if the both get better from it. Red Hat is, for instance, uh, uh, the type of sponsor uh, company that is doing a very good job at it. Now, the cash flow of, a of an average open source software company. Well, if you sell a project, well, if you have a project, you, you get money in, hopefully in time, and you can pay out uh, the salaries. If you don't have a project, well, you have to lay off some people. So you see those businesses going uh, on a sort of roller coaster where the average uh, time for a project is three up to six months. So their horizon is six months at, at the utmost, their cash horizon. Well, that's a bit uh, difficult if you want to invest, for instance, in marketing 
in uh, organizational development, uh, in overhead for personnel, HR, finance. So what I have found is that companies that purely focus on tailor-made projects cannot grow further than 25, 30 FTEs. And unless they add additional business to the core organization. For instance, they set up a consultancy agency alongside it. Um, so there's a lack of continuous income. Gosh, I wish I had a license I could uh, reap uh, benefits from. It has been my, let's say, dream often enough uh, with my former company. So what we see is that subscriptions are sold. And actually that is an SLA, but uh, it is also a license in disguise, I think. Um, you, s you promise that you will give support in the future and please give me the money now. Well, that's a very simple way of saying, okay, now I have money to invest and I can look beyond that six month horizon as a company. So I can give people contracts for longer than six months up to a year. You see that other ways of getting continuous income uh, into the organization is by providing hosting services. Uh, so per month I can get income which I can calculate into the future as long as the contracts last. Um, so uh, th there are more and more ways to get out of that cash trap. As a last uh, item, I said, okay, let's put it in there, the embedded marketplace. I'm not that familiar, familiar with it, but code that is part of a machine. Okay, you could say uh, a telephone, for instance, but also some household appliances nowadays have open source software inside, but it's not being sold like such. But for those uh, uh, manufacturers, it's a cheap way of having access to code without having to pay uh, licenses to whoever is, was normally selling uh, uh, the software. And I believe that we are sort of in the mm, middle of the curve now. A little look into the future. Gosh, if everything goes well, open source software becomes a commodity. Uh, no extra value to reap from it. Everybody has it. Oh gosh, that's, that sounds like heaven for most. The whole of the market has already something uh, in terms of open source uh, inside, somewhere, in the company, in your household, wherever. Uh, quite a lot of competitors uh, servicing the same customers. Prices drop, uh, innovation drops, and the mar marketplace gets saturated, it's called. Uh, and as prices drop, well, your return on investment becomes uh, rather small, to be quite honest. Um, what you then see is that companies go and look for other marketplaces or other business models. Uh, I have called it, okay, they go into another curve, another industry often, more often than not, and disband the marketplace. Well, that's future. Uh, we're not there yet. So from uh, Helms Deep Barbarians at the Gate. We have been promised a second coming, which is still not there after 15 years of open source. And we have had a, market uh, a marketing strategy which consisted of running around the walls of Jericho, blazing the trumpets, shouting their heads off, and well, after 15 years, I'm still a bit disappointed.
and that unique selling point that we had. We are the best, we are the best. Well, sorry, it might work for another developer who could recognize what the code consisted of, but for a finance manager, he couldn't bloody care less what the code could look like. He wants to know, what does it cost me? Or what can I, can I earn from it? So we need to change our tune, I think. And this is, uh, sorry for the lettering there, it has to do with the fact that I have now used another computer. Um, but the open source adoption cube, I've called it. What are the drivers behind the adoption of, of open source in the marketplace? First, it has to do with, is it an open source uh, offering for the desktop or within the organization behind the firewall on the central server? Or is it a purely web-based application that you have on offer? Secondly, are you going to uh, change what is already there on the desktop server or outside within its lifetime, well, I would say that is a very difficult proposal because then you are always turn out more expensive than what is already there. Or, and now, now you have an opportunity, is what the customer already had in-house, is that end of life cycle Okay, he needs to invest, he knows it. And you stand a chance of being at least equally expensive or cheap as the traditional uh, closed source uh, software offering with, with which you have to compete. Or you could say, well, even better, is the application that you have on offer is that totally new for, to the organization? Because then suddenly that opens up uh, more opportunities for you as a supplier of services in the open source field to enter uh, into an agreement with the, the customer. And thirdly, you have what I would call for whom is the application meant? Is it the expert, specialist user, the, the heavy user uh, who uses the application six hours uh, of each working day? Is it an employee within the company who uses the application once, twice, three times a day? Or is it a citizen who is via the web often, more often enough than not? the one who you has to use the application uh, once every week, for instance. If you combine those three axes, then you get into scenarios. For instance, uh, an easy selling uh, position that you have is when a website needs to have citizens, customers, clients, uh, e-commerce for instance, uh, to, uh, for a company that wants to go into e-commerce. Uh, and well, most, more often than not, open source is then a choice of preference. If it is, for instance, your uh, Microsoft Office, used by a uh, Excel jockey on his desktop, and still the uh, the license is valid and has been paid for to Microsoft in this case. If you then go into the the company and say, "Okay, I have Open Office or Libre Office nowadays. Uh, do you want to have that?" Simple as that then, well, you're sort of laughed at. Personally, I think that anything to do with the desktop nowadays is out of bounds for open source. The sales cycle, the sales process, everything is 
far too complicated and interrelated uh, to have a quick win there. People might disagree, but still the uh, Windows Office uh, offering is difficult to supplant. Going back to where we came from, what started as a personal hobby with which people made money, it has become a profession. Suits entered the, uh, the arena, company cars, uh, and that means that on the other hand of the other side of the market, you have those users who, according to the same adoption model, assess an open source offering in terms of timing, platform, and users. Um, if, for instance, timing and platform are critical, then you talk to the ICT department. If users and timing are uh, key drivers if, in the decision-making unit, then it is finance that you have to talk to, general management. And if it's uh, an offering that you have that uh, impacts on the platform and the users, well, then you have to have a more dip departmental view upon things. For instance, ERP uh, uh, and CRM uh, projects tend to have a more functional approach in their sales process. How am I doing on time? I'm a bit... Okay, thank you. So, what we see is we have uh, more and more worldwide corporations uh, entering the arena of open source. Uh, Android, Red Hat, Sugar CRM, Hippo, for instance, is a Dutch company. And they position themselves as regular companies with a flavor of the old school uh, happy-go-lucky uh, save the world but essentially there are corporations and whether they have been organized as a foundation or uh, a cooperation it's about hard sales well I feel still there's an uphill struggle. And this is the steepest part. So we really have to make an effort in order to go for a more, what, what I would say, market-driven approach uh, as a community as at large. And I think that there's change. Change at the customer side. Um, that will enable us to uh, steamroll a little bit fa uh, faster. Not being the train, but the one who saves the damsel in distress. I would say we are saving lives perhaps. And that is there's an economic crisis going on, and which means that profit sec sectors governmental sectors are looking at their budgets and what they found was that they had quite a lot of software developed internally which they cannot maintain profitably anymore especially governmental agencies in Holland they and also in the UK they have developed over the last 10 years so much software with GPL, GPL licenses and whatever you have and they say, well, we have to retreat to our core business and software development and maintenance is not part of that. Um, I'm working now on a project for a group of companies that are uh, sharing software or intend to share soft software because they found out that the development of that software was necessary in order to kickstart their business is taking up so much resources nowadays that in times of scarcity,
they don't want to do that anymore themselves and they cannot uh, maintain it to the degree that they want it. So what they said is, let's open source, it's a verb nowadays, this software. Let's find if we can give it to the marketplace. Uh, throw it in the open domain and see if somebody wants to take it on and work on it. Well, they need to uh, have these uh, pieces of software uh, outsourced quite quickly. Because uh, I believe that the economic crisis is going on for another two years from now on. Which means, okay, they are rethinking their ICT policy and they are going to see if reuse of the code is, is uh, viable. Reuse by others, even by competitors. And, well, that tags along with oh, the open data uh, movement and the open standards movement in which reuse of data needs to be enabled. Uh, it's a new way of selling open source nowadays to the government. You say open standards have to be, uh, are, are required. Open data is the new policy. Gosh, an open source can enable that. That's the way we sell now to the government nowadays. And why is uh, the uh, reuse, uh, I think, a viable way of moving on? And that is, uh, governmental agencies have developed, for instance, uh, the same sof software applications separately to communalities, uh, uh, principalities, or whatever it's called in Dutch or English, uh, next to one another, find out at a seminar that they have the same software developed independently of one another. And they cannot uh, put their hand in the fire to guarantee that it is qualitative, qualitatively uh, the best. Um, so they are pooling resources and say, okay, I'm going to use yours, I'm ditching my piece of software, and that's end, the end of it. And by the way, we're going to find a third municipality. Then, okay, it becomes a more sustainable uh, effort. And it's picked up on, upon in, uh, in governmental circles more and more. And shared service centers, either or uh, open source software uh, service suppliers, are doing the maintenance and updates. They don't need to do it themselves. And they can call somebody who does the support because they have an SLA uh, contracted out. The only thing is they have the knickers a bit in a twist. Because what they thought was, I'm going to throw some code over the fence. Gosh, nobody is picking it up, why not? So there were some pieces in the paper, newspapers uh, in the last year where uh, governmental officers expressed their fr frustration that nobody was wanting their uh, great code. Um, and I would say, well, uh, it's a bit silly uh, if you throw it. They, they even made up a marketplace uh, for uh, orphaned code in, the, uh, in government. Nobody was willing to take it on. And I think that is that can be uh, countered by saying, okay, there's a demand and there's a supply, but you need to bring them together. Um, next week I'm going to uh, speak at a conference in which I will promote a public-private partnership arrangement in which a governmental agency with orphan code or surplus code or whatever you would call it, is going to be part of a the nucleus of a uh, community, community project. Uh, they have to find partners with whom they can uh, work together on bringing it to the marketplace, uh, in which they probably have to put money into it. Gosh, uh, a cash-starved government 
needs to invest in order to get rid of their software. There's some irony there. Which means also that you have to review the licensing uh, of the code on offer and the way you put contracts together. I would say if I as a government would ask you and you and you to sort of dig into the code and update it, upgrade it and maintain it, well it will cost you some money, some investment in time, money uh, and whatever you, uh, effort. I think you as a supplier would want a form of security that the investment that you have made in order to learn about that's the code, needs to be, well, paid back. Uh, so I will promote the idea of a concession. Well, that is a bit of a difficulty, because then you will say to the rest of the marketplace, well, you guys can sell my software or my former software into the marketplace and others cannot. That's a concession. Yeah, it is. And it means also that if you don't do that, nobody's willing to take on that bloody code and look into it, upgrade it, better it. Um, and will provide a more durable uh, situation. And after a couple of years, you can say, okay, uh, you have sold it to my neighbors. Uh, got the money out of it, and after three years, fine, now it's really open source. What you actually do is an enterprise version, a dual license uh, method on it. So, question is, to be or not to be? And we have thought we were the happy-go-lucky, uh, fuddy-duddy uh, penguin. They thought we were a slasher uh, duck. We turn back now to a more approachable, old school, uh, friendly penguin with whom you could deal, uh, deal. And meantime, our newest image, I would say, is money. Gosh, not time, not code, it's money. That makes the world turn around. So, that's my way to see if I'm really going for the world at last. Thank you. And if there are questions, please, if, if you want to boo, it's also okay. <laughs>